Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are, whenever you're watching this, this is Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be swatching out this palette of single shadows, which features MAC and Makeup Geek singles that are really, really old. <laughs> Welcome to everybody watching today, thank you so very much for joining me. Today's video is going to be me swatching out all of the remaining eyeshadows I still have in my MAC and Makeup Geek eyeshadow palette. I used to have two separate palettes, one with MAC and one with Makeup Geek, and I decided last year to get rid of some shades because I wasn't wearing everything, I wasn't interested in everything anymore, and I got rid of the things I didn't like, and I combined everything into one palette. I think I have a video where I actually did that combining of the two, and I do also have swatches up with what the collection used to be, so I can link all of those videos down below in case you're interested. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing today to see what we've got going on here. In case you're new here, hi, my name is Micah, I live in the Netherlands, I like to come on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice Review, and getting the use out of my makeup. And because I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, I deem myself a snow angel, so if you'd like to join the snow angel club, then click subscribe down below. So yes, a MAC and Makeup Geek singles palette. So there's a lot going on here in 2022. I decided I was going to get some more use out of my single eyeshadows. So I'm doing a couple of projects at a time, one of them being this, where I take every single singles palette I have and swatch it out for you. But I've also been using these singles to build my own custom ones. And actually one of the shades that is missing from this one which is this shade here, supposed to go in here. So I thought I could mention it here again. So if you'd like to see me like do a video with swatches and putting together a new color story and all the looks that I did with the color story that I was using, then definitely stay tuned because I do one of those videos once a month as well. But yeah, today is MAC and Makeup Geek's turn. Um, I'm not even sure whether any of these shades are still available. The Makeup Geek ones I know for sure aren't available because Makeup Geek closed down earlier this year. And also a lot of my MAC singles date from the time when I was quite new to makeup and I wasn't really sure what to get, which is why in the end I decided to create one palette with all of those shades I had from those two brands because I just... I just had so many shades that I wasn't using because these were some of the first singles I ever bought. And so these are old, but a lot of them still work really well. I only experienced one MAC eyeshadow. Um, getting like a lot of heart pen, which is what which was the shade vanilla that's not in here, but I still use it as a cream colored shadow to set my eyeshadow base with. So I still get use out of that. I just need to scrape the top off every once in a while. Um, but yeah, powder shadow can just last you a very, very long time. And you can see here that some of these are well-loved. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of like dents and things like that. And the way I've laid this palette out, roughly... Oh wait, I now see indeed. Oops. <laughs> That's what you get when you take singles out and then you rearrange it. Because the, the MAC shadows, is perhaps good to know, that these aren't fully magnetic in the pan. Um, in... If you buy a MAC Singles palette, then the palette itself has a different type of magnet, so these are actually pushed away, which is why I've decided to combine them with the Makeup Geek ones, because then they stay put a little bit better, but they do tend to slide down, <laughs> like what happened over here. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go through each row, and each row sort of has a theme, so I've got all of my lighter neutral shimmers at the top, then I have all of like my more mid-tone creasy matte shades in the uh, middle part, going from lightest to darkest. Then I have a row of nothing but more um, intense shimmers, or like different shimmers that aren't as neutral as these ones are. Then we have some periwinkles and some berry shades going into teals. And then we have a row of greens, you could say. So that's the way the palette is laid out. So let me show you what we've got going on. First shade here is by MAC and it's called Dazzle Light, which is a very pretty, not too shimmering, like it's not too strong of a shimmer, but it does have something. And that's what Dazzle Light looks like. Next up we have another MAC shade. This is Retro Spec, which I believe is a luster finish, which is not my favorite finish in MAC shadows, but this is actually really pretty. So that is what Retro Spec looks like, and it's sort of like, 
I feel it has a bit of a similar vibe as Ritz by Colourpop, where it has this like nude, almost peach leaning base, and then it just has a bit of like more cool tone shimmer on top. It's not super vibrant or intense. Um, I don't have too many of those very foily shades from MAC. The ones that you see in here that are very foily are the Makeup Geek ones. More MAC, this is Patina, and as you can see, this has been used quite a bit. This is one of my favorite MAC shades. And that is Patina, and Patina is like a taupey brown with a gold sheen to it. That's how I would describe it. It's very pretty, a bit more warm tone than what I prefer now. This is one of the reasons why I got rid of so many of my MAC and Makeup Geek shades, because there were just a lot of super flu shades that I wasn't using. But this, I still like, and it's very different from any other singles I have. And another great one. Look at that dent. This is Woodwinked, and this is a great one and done shadow, if that's something that you're into. Um, these have, like, when I first got into makeup, this is all I would wear. And you could, like, fluff this into the crease, and it would look different all the time. It is a gold, but here you can see that Woodwing does have a bit of a cooler, almost, like, taupey flash to it. So it's, like, the reverse of Patina, which has a warm base with, no, a cooler base with a warm flash, and this is a warmer base with a cool flash. So that's probably why I've loved Woodwinged even more than I have Patina over the years. This, another infamous MAC shade, this is Satin Taupe. As you can see, quite a bit of use here. We've got a bit of a dent going on. And Satin Taupe is a taupe, but it has a bit of a purpley, lavender sort of quality to it. It's not a full-on taupe, I feel, but that's why it goes really well with some of these like plummy tones that I've got going on just below it in the palette. And then we have a Makeup Geek shade. This is Charmed, which I believe is one of their foil, foil, foiled shadows. I mean... Such a shame the brand is no longer around because look at that silver. Isn't that one of the best silvers you've ever seen? And it's not too stark of a silver. Some silvers can be very sort of weird because it's got too, of, too much of a bright undertone, but you can just see that it has that darker, almost charcoal-leaning base, and then it has this silvery, almost light blue flash to it. It's very pretty. And the final light shimmer I have for you is Nylon, which is a shade that I had for a long time and I didn't use it a lot, and then it got a bit of hype a couple of years ago and I started using it a lot. As an inner corner highlight. This is like the more vibrant version of Dazzle Light, and here you can see as well that I've used it quite a bit. So I need to build this up just a little more because it's a bit of a thin shadow. That's the case with a lot of MAC shadow I find. It's a bit of a thinner formula. And you can see here that it's nice and bright and vibrant. It's got a good amount of sheen. Do you just see that? But it's not, like, it looks very yellow in the pan, but as yellow as it looks, I really like how it has this almost translucent base and then this greenish-yellow sort of vibe running through it. I really like this one. And in case you didn't believe me, this is Dazzle Light and this is Nylon side by side. And you can see in the pan, hardly any difference. Next up is Wedge, and Wedge is a great shade for, like, transitioning or crease work, blending things out. Uh, depending on your skin tone, of course. For me, this works as a crease shade. It, it's maybe too light for some people, but on my fair skin, this definitely works. It's a really nice, very light, taupey brown. And there is what Wedge looks like. Another great transition crease shade is Soft Brown from MAC. I remember this being so hyped up, and then they discontinued it for a while, and then it came back reformulated. So this is the reformulated version. I don't know if they still do this. This seems to be going in and out of stock a lot, so maybe it's just really popular. I don't know, but this took me years to buy. So I know this doesn't look like much, and it looks a bit patchy even, but it just fluffs into the crease in a way that you can just easily build it up, and it works really well that way. Then we have a cult favorite Makeup Geek shade. This is Chickadee, and this is a great mustard yellow. If soft brown or chickadee are too warm tone for you, then corduroy can definitely see you through the day. This is a really pretty cool tone brown. 
Again, like soft brown, not the best in a finger swatch, but it works really well in an eye look. The only shade that isn't matte in this row, but I felt it fitted better here than it did in the top row. So that's why it went here. And this is Shale, which is one of my favorite shades by MAC, but not one that's often talked about. So there we have Shale. It's a satin. It has a really pretty, just a hint of shine, nothing, nothing too crazy. And it's like a gray toned lavender and it just works really well. Another one of those doesn't swatch great, but it looks great on the eye shade. This is Blackberry from MAC. And there is Blackberry. I did build it up so that you can actually see what this does a little bit better. It's quite a sheer pigmented shade. It's not that intense, but it makes a great pairing with shale because it's sort of like the matte version of shale, really. It's got a little bit more depth, so it's great in the crease if you have fair skin. I really like it. It can be paired with browns. It can go really well with wedge, for instance, or soft brown, but also some of the darker shades that I've got going on down here. So the one we have coming next up, for instance. And I'm never sure what this one is called. I always need to check it, but this is Embark from MAC. And this swatch is a little bit better than the others. As you can see, it is a cool tone brown, but it does have a bit of red running through it, which is why I feel it's a dark brown that goes with any look you do. If you put cool tones with it, it's going to pull cool toned. If you put it with warm tones, it's going to pull warm toned. It's just, it has dimension, even though it's a matte. I don't know how they did it, but it works, trust me. And now we're getting more into Makeup Geek territory because um, these lovely shimmer shades are all Makeup Geek that you see down here. This is Mesmerize, which is one of the best taupe shimmers I've ever found. So sad you can no longer buy this. And I hope you can now understand why this is in this palette, because if you put this with Blackberry and Shale, you just have a look. I mean, this is again a great one and done shadow, because as you can see, it has that deep base, but it had it has almost this lavender, dirty, lilac kind of shine to it. It's really, really pretty. Fluffed all over the lid. This is one of the best ways to wear this shade. This is another luster shadow from MAC, and this is Honey Lust. Now, this is another shade that I had to hunt down for years before they actually reformulated and did a much better formula. By that time, MAC shadows were much talked about, but this one had been on my wish list for such a long time that this is one of the last MAC singles I ever bought, I think. And it just, I mean, if this had been, like this shade, if this had been in the Naked Honey, I would have been very happy. It's got like a peachy base, but then this really gold, intense flash, but without it being too glittery, which is what I love. Which is why it's in this row and not here, because I feel that this just has a little bit more impact than some of the more basic things in the top row. This is also a different one from MAC. This is expensive pink, and as you can see, this has quite a lot of dent in here as well. I use this a lot. It's like a peachy pinky rose gold with a with a gold flash, really. It's not quite duochrome. I mean, at the time I bought this, duochromes were not a thing. But it's just, it's really, really pretty. It's very special. Yes, it's warm toned, but it's subtle enough for it to still look okay. I mean, this doesn't pull orange on my lids at all. It definitely takes more of a pinky quality when I wear it. And another great plum colored shade. This is Star Violet. So I, can, I hope you can see why I've grouped these sort of together because like expensive pink, Star Violet has a bit of a like deeper base and then that sort of like plummy cranberry sort of flash to it. I feel it does a similar thing to Mesmerized from uh, Makeup Geek as well, but that base is just a lot deeper than this is. But this is so pretty. Again, a great one and done shadow. Because of this dimension, it's not quite duochrome, but because, th because of this, it's a great one and done shadow that you can fluff into the crease as well as peck onto the lid and the lower lash line, and it will just look different because of the placement and the brushes you use. Next up, Makeup Geek Grandstand, and this stems from the days when I was gr just loving hard on all things rose gold, and this is quite possibly one of the best rose golds I've ever come across. It's one of their foiled shadows. It's incredibly metallic.
and that's grandstand. It does have a cooler sort of flip to it almost. It's really, really pretty. It's just so sad that this is no longer sold. And we all know how I feel about warm tones, when, when, but when you do them this well, I can do nothing else but to hang on to them. This is Flamethrower from Makeup Geek. It's just such a vibrant, coppery orange. Like, I don't love orange shades, but there's just something about this one that really gives me the feels. And the last shade in this row is also one of the deepest neutral tones I have in here. This is Steampunk from Makeup Geek, and this is one of their duochromes. And this is like a very black and brown base with almost like a burgundy red sort of flip to it. It's really interesting. So there we have Steampunk. Like, just look at how incredibly saturated and lovely that is. It's perhaps not as flippy as we get duochromes nowadays, but this was definitely one of the first duochromes I ever purchased in my makeup collection. Another great Makeup Geek shade is Rebel, and I do actually have things like this in my, the rest of my singles collection, but since this is the OG, I just, I can't resist this one, and I feel it is... Again, a little bit different from shades I have that are similar, because most of the ones I have that do this have a blue base and then a gold flip, but this is more of a periwinkle lavender base and then a gold flip. And there we have Rebel. There you have the purpley, plummy, dusty lavender base, and there we get the gold. It is really absolutely stunning. More Makeup Geek then. this is pop culture if this is just periwinkle heaven. And this is pop culture. It is not too intense in terms of a shimmer, it just has a bit of a shine. And it's definitely that sort of like in between a blue and a purple but without it being a blurple because it doesn't have a flip. And I feel we don't get enough shades like this anymore. Periwinkle is one of my favorite bright shades to wear. If we go bright, turquoises and periwinkles is where it's at for me. And here we have Makeup Geek's Plot Twist. And Plot Twist is a great companion to the other two shades I've just shown you. This is just a little bit more flashy though. It's from their foiled range, so it has more of a metallic sheen. I'm not sure if you can see it. In real life it shows up a bit more. Oh, there we have it. But it's got more of a periwinkle base with a lavender flip, which also makes this quite a unique shade because very often these like blue to purple flips are a lot stronger and this I feel is a lot more subtle and therefore more wearable in my opinion. Do we have any shade from MAC that is as infamous as this guy? This is Sketch from MAC and this is going to swatch horribly, I just know it. It was always a bit on the dry side and of course this is an old shadow, but I love this burgundy plum shade. I feel there is nothing like it on the market, which is why I love it. And that's Sketch. It's just, it's a gray deepening up shade for people who don't like browns and even though it has red running through it, because it is definitely like a burgundy plum, it leans more plum, so it's cool toned. Um, so this is going to work really well, for instance, with some of these like plummy things that I've got going on up here. Uh, it works really well with the taupey shades I've got going on, but this can also work as a deepening up shade for some of the purples I just showed you. So this is a great shade, it just doesn't swatch the best. This is the other deepest shade in this entire palette. This is Beauty Marked from MAC. This is a great shade. It's sort of like steampunk, but then more purple leaning. So where steampunk has red, this is more like a black and plum. And I don't normally like shades like this because they just look black on me. But this one has enough contrast that it actually does look purple. So again, not the best swatch in some of these MAC shades here. Not just because they're old, but the, that's how they've always performed. The formula is just a lot thinner than what we're used to nowadays. But you can just see that it has this like burgundy plummy flash to it as well, which is why I feel it goes with Sketch. Um, but this works really well as liner, and this is also a MAC shade that I bought a lot later. Because when I first built my MAC eyeshadow palette, I was a bit afraid of deeper shades like this. 
But once I figured out what I could actually do with them, um, I did like them. And I, a shade like this, I feel, can give me a bit more than just a straight up black. Another shade I bought a bit later is Steamy from MAC. This is another one that, that's why this doesn't have a lot of use, because I think I bought this around the time that I really got into palettes and my singles became a bit neglected in my collection. But Steamy is very pretty. And what it does is just what any good turquoise should do. Just add a nice sparkling azure blue ocean-like vibe, which I love. And I mean, I love a good matte teal any time of day, and this together with Steamy is really, really pretty. This is Plumage. And here you can really see that the formula did change over time because this matte swatches beautifully and it goes really well with that shade below it. This is Makeup Geek though, this is MAC. One more Makeup Geek shade here, this is Havoc, this is a duochrome. And that's that like blue-brown sort of moment where, you know, you have your deeper brown base and then this bluish-green sort of flash. I love pairing this one. Is it this one or the next one? I don't know, but I believe it's this one that I really like pairing with one of my ColourPop Super Shocks in the shade Partridge. Now it's definitely Havoc by Makeup Geek that I like pairing with Partridge from ColourPop because this is Green Smoke for MAC and this is really pretty, but it's another one of those luster shadows that is just a lot of sheer shimmer, but do you see how lovely this is? It's a cool toned green. And again, not the best, like it has a bit of sheerness to it, you can just see it, but topped over things or as a one and done shadow, it can be very pretty indeed. It's almost a bit cocky here, but you can also see that it has a bit of a silver quality to it. Another great green shade from MAC, this is Sumptuous Olive. And this again, not too heavy on the shimmer, but do you just see that it almost has like a mustardy yellow sort of base to it? It's really pretty and it still works really well for a more warm tone green against my fair skin. Now this I love the shade name of. This is Makeup Geek's Venom. And the shade here isn't super exciting, but I feel it's still different enough. I, it's almost like a gold, but this has much more green to it. So if you take an antique gold and then just amp it up with a lot of dark green running through it, you get this shade. And I just love how grungy this is. This is a great grungy shade for the fall time for sure. And then we have the final MAC shade in the palette. This is Humid. Now, and this shade is a bit deceiving because it looks very matte in the pan, but as you can see here, it has a bit of a satin shine to it. And it is a murky green. It's like a swampy green, but it's got some brightness as well. It's a very interesting color. Makeup Geek's Epic is quite possibly one of the most epic, pun intended, forest green shimmers I own. I mean, darkness, forest green, but then we get the shine, which is almost like a bluish green. It just, it remind. this is forest vibes. Like you get that darkness of like a tree trunk, and then as you go to the top of the trees, you get the vibrancy of the sh sun shining on it. Like that's the way I feel about the shadow. It's another great grungy shade for the fall time for sure. So I just stuck my finger in there. Uh, this is Houdini for MAC. This is the final shade in the palette. And this is a great teal shimmer. It's got a very dark base, as you'll see in a minute. I had this in my custom singles palette last month and I really loved it. There we have Houdini. Do you now see why I didn't get rid of any of my Makeup Geek foiled shadows? They are just some of the best shadows I own in terms of singles, and some of them have really interesting shades. And that's sort of what I did when I built, when I kept like decided what to keep, is I went with shades that I felt really added something to my makeup collection. Even though this is one of the more neutral ones that I have, I wanted this palette to still have some interest to the shade so that it wasn't just like really boring things. I mean my MAC palette had so many superfluous shades, things that I already had in other palettes and things like that and the same went for my Makeup Geek shades. The Makeup Geek shades I bought around the time that warm tones were just everywhere and most of the palette were warm toned, especially the mattes, which is why the top half of this palette is more MAC heavy 
and the bottom of this palette is more Makeup Geek heavy and I just feel that this color story just, it just makes for a very pretty thing. Let me pop that one shade back in because that's bugging me. I mean, as a color story for me, this just really comes together in the way also how certain shades play out. I could definitely like just do looks with just this palette and have this be like the only palette I have in my collection. That's sort of how I conceptualize it, that it just has everything I need. And very often when I build my little singles palettes, I end up picking one or two shades from my MAC and Makeup Geek singles because these are just the basics that I feel I just need to create looks, which is why I very often go for this. And then of course I have my Cool Tone Neutrals palette with a lot of Sydney Gray shades that I've already swatched out for you. Um, so yeah, these shades I think are lovely. Some of them don't swatch the best, but they still work really well on the eyes. Um, and yeah, some of these have just gotten a lot of love. So I want to continue to love these for as long as I can, for as long as they'll last me. Um, so yeah, thank you so very much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed the video. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos a week. So if you'd like to stay tuned for more, and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.